We're going to look this morning rapidly at Gog and Magog, Yajuj and Majuj. Who are they? Are they human beings? <coughs> or are they some strange creatures with two dozen ears and four dozen noses and six or eight hands on each side? What, who are they? Are they from some outer planet or do they reside down in the bowel of the earth? Who are they? Let the Quran answer that question. In Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran, we are told, Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna fil aqqaq and magal are perpetrating fasad. Fasad is not just a sin. Fasad is a crime. It is criminal conduct. For a sin, punishment is over there. But for a crime, punishment is also over here. And the punishment for fasad is the worst in the Quran. It, it is graded. It, you can be banished. Hmm? It, you can be, you can have your hands and your feet cut off on opposite sides. And you can be crucified. And if you are crucified and when they bring down your body, you pick up your briefcase and you walk away, you come back, you're not yet crucified. You're not yet crucified. Because this crucifixion of this punishment which is in the Quran is most certainly not to be just put, put for five minutes on a cross, on a, on a tree, and then you can bring him down. That's not crucifixion. Not in the Quran. You have to die then that you crucify in the Quran. Outside of the Quran there are many strange things, I know. But this is the Quran. Who can <coughs> commit an act of facade? Who are Gog and Magog? Can't be an angel. Why? Because angels have no free will. They cannot disobey. They commit no sin. <laughs> so Gog and Magog cannot be angels. Other than angels, who else have been created by Allah? Only jinn and human beings. And so Gog and Magog can either be angels or jinn or human beings. If not, we probably are creatures of whom we have no knowledge because Allah makes no mention of them. No knowledge. If Allah makes no mention of them, then this Quran has come to explain all things. So this Quran must explain Gog and Magar. Can they be jinn? Yes, jinn can commit sin, and jinn will be judged on the day of judgment, and jinn will be in heaven or in hell. There are jinn who are Muslims, and there are jinn who are shayateen. But Gog and Magog cannot be jinn, because jinn are invisible creatures. And if you are being attacked by jinn who are committing facade in your land and you build a barrier built of material substance, how would a material wall protect you from the jinn? And that's what Zulkarnain did. He built a barrier built of, um, was it recycled paper? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was iron. Zubarul Hadi. And a barrier built with iron 
offers no protection from the jinn. And so the conclusion we arrive at is that there's only one other creator, creation. In all of creation, one other which can commit sin, which is a crime, and who can be contained behind the material barrier, because they're material beings. And so we conclude that Gog and Magog are human beings, and we only use the Quran so far. When we go to the hadith, the Prophet wasalam, said that the Ya'juj and Ma'juj are from Banu Adam. They are, from, they are the progeny of Adam alayhi salam. They are human beings. So that completes that discussion. No need to go and search in the bowel of the earth. No need to go and search anywhere else in the skies. They are human beings. The rabbis in Medina who ask, how can we tell whether he is indeed a prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And they said, ask him these three questions which only a prophet can answer. And one of the questions was, ask him about the great travel, traveler who traveled to the two ends of the earth. The Quran answered the question and gave the information about the journey to one side and the journey to the second side. But that was not the target of the question. Allah knew the target of the question. And so Allah gave them the journey, which was the third one. And that journey in the third direction gave us one of the signs of the last day, major signs of the last day, Gog and Magog. So the target of the question was Gog and Magog. Does he know about Gog and Magog? And they question me about someone who is called the possessor, possessor of Karnain, either two horns or who impacts on two ages. It appears to mean two ages here because otherwise the Quran uses Karn for an age, not for a horn. He travels in the direction of the setting of the sun. And then he travels in the direction of the rising of the sun. And then he travels in a third direction. Which was it? That is west. And this one is east. Which is the third one. Hmm? We know the third one. Why? Because Nabi Muhammad Islam said that when they are released, they will pass by the Sea of Galilee on the way to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem, they will surround the mountain, which is in Baytul Maqdis. That's, that's what the hadith says. And Nabi Isa Islam will be up the mountain. So if you're traveling, passing the Sea of Galilee on your way to Jerusalem, you're coming from the north. You, you did study geography, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. When he traveled in the direction of the setting of the sun, he, he could go no further because he came upon a body of water, which was Hamia, dark and murky. So now we're looking for a body of water to the left of the Holy Land, are going north. And there are only two. One is the Mediterranean Sea, which is not Hamia. Because you can look down and you can see meters down. But north of the Mediterranean Sea, there is precisely such a body of water. It is even known as the Black Sea. Because it is Hamia. So much algae in the water that you visibility is very, very uh, difficult. Just about one meter you can see. And our Mufassirun long years ago identified this. Identified it as the Black Sea. 
You find it in Tafsir ibn Kathir. And they come across a people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created Zulkarnay and bestowed upon him power. Power to pursue any objective he, would, he chooses to pursue. He is the superpower. But he has faith in Allah. And so when power found, is founded, power rests on the foundations of faith. How will power be used? The Quran now gives a beautiful explanation. Zulkarnain replies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have a little difficulty in having that fellow called Alexander, the you called Alexander the Great, having a conversation with Allah. I have a little difficulty with that. <laughs> Allah speaks to him and he speaks to Allah. Alexander, the fellow who worshipped more than Greek gods and goddesses. Yeah. So, Zulkarnain replies to Allah and he says, those who commit acts of zulm, who are unjust, who are oppressed, who are wicked in their country, I'm going to punish them. And so power, when it rests on the foundation of the faith, is used to punish the oppressor. And when they return to you, you will also punish them. And so when power rests on the foundations of faith, there is an essential harmony between this world here and that world there. What a wonderful world in which to live. And those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct, I'll treat them nicely and they will be rewarded. So when power rests on the foundations of faith, power is used to support and to protect those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct. The Quran is teaching a lesson. And then he travels in the direction of the rising of the sun. So if you move east from the Black Sea, how far can you go? As you move east from the Black Sea, you're going to come upon another sea, beyond which you can't go. What's the name of that sea? The Caspian Sea. You're lucky I don't have time to ask you questions. <laughs> the Caspian Sea. And there he came across the people and now we see the <coughs> very few words, agonizingly few in the Quran. He came across a people, Lam Naja'allahum min just only these words? Could you not have given us some more? And sitr is a covering, that which covers. Other than that, we gave them no, no more covering. Other than that, we gave them no covering. So now we are forced. We are forced. There is no way we can get away from it. We are forced to de dig deep to try to determine what is the message being sent. And when we come to a conclusion, of course, we must say Allah knows best. There's no obligation to accept our understanding. Could be. Here are people who are sitting on a vast sea of oil. When power rests on the foundations of faith and you come across such a people, you want to exploit the oil. I mean, it's valuable. And these are just human beings then. What do you do? You pick them up and you ship them to Brazil. So you can exploit all the oil. Or alternatively, these are people who are living an essentially primitive way of life. Only the natural covering, that's all that they have from the elements. What do you do when you come across such a people? Do you take them out 
of that natural way of life and put them into something, I don't know whether you've seen it, something called blue jeans. <laughs> so become part of the blue jeans jamaat. Huh? And get them to start smoking cigarettes and civilize them. What do you do? Kazali. وَقَدْ أَحَطْنَ بِمَا لَدَيْهِ كُبْرًا كَذَلِكْ One word! Sheikh Ali Mustafa, only one word. That's all. This whole card name had the, had the compassion. He had the good sense, he had the integrity to leave them as they were undisturbed. This is the, this is the understanding that we get from the tafasir. Hmm? But we are struggling with just a few words. Economy of language has reached its perfection here in this passage of Surah Al-Kahf. Allah says, I understood perfectly why He acted in the way that He did. And so when power rests on the foundations of faith, power will place human values first before economic values and the, risk, and the exploitation of the economic resources of the world. The human being comes first. When power rests on the foundations of faith, power will respect the way of life of even those who live the primitive way. What a wonderful world it could have been! Huh? And then he travels in the third direction which is to the north. But when we look from that Black Sea to this, the Caspian Sea, and now we have the firm foundations of geography, eh? when we go north, there is an unbroken barrier of mountains. What are they called? What are they called? Caucasus Mountains an unbroken barrier of mountains. But this unbroken barrier of mountains has a little pass in between them. A solitary pass where you can pass through from the north to go down to the south. And there he comes across a people oh, it's a very important clue now. لا يكادون يفقهون قولا their language could not be understood, indicating that this is a language which is unique, unrelated to the regional languages. An important clue. The Georgian language fits the bill perfectly. The Georgian language is right there in that region by the Caucasus Mountains. And the Georgian language is unconnected with all the regional languages. See how we're moving forward? They say to Zulkar Dain in the Yajuja Majuja Mufsiduna Philop, Gog and Magog are committing, perpetrating facade in our land. Can you help us? Can you build a barrier for us? We're prepared to pay you to protect us from them. One would have expected Zulkar Dain to say, I don't need to build any barrier. I'll just move in there and teach them the lesson of their life. They'll be scared to even put their finger on you after I'm finished with them. <laughs> but he didn't say that. And so now we have a profile of Gog and Magog coming out of the Quran. We have not gone to the Hadith as yet. That he is a superpower. And yet he does not, as the superpower of the world, he does not have the power to be able to go there, go into them and teach them a lesson. <coughs> they have a power greater than his. And all that he can do with Allah's help is to build a barrier. He says, I don't need your money. What Allah has given to me is good. Just help me with manpower. Bring me blocks of iron. So it has to be a region with iron ore deposits. 
that is the Caucasus mountain around there. And after he had cut the iron blocks and put them and the mountain pass, the Quran describes Falamma Sawa Baina Sadafain. Sadafain. Not by accident, eh? The clues are coming one after the other so fast they're coming. If you take a shell and you open it, you get Sadafe. This side and that side joined at the bottom. Huh? Like this. So Zulkarnain is describing to us the shape of the pass, Sadafe. Like the sides of an open shell that are joined at the bottom. That is pre up to this day you can go and see the same shape is there. It's called the Dariel Gorge. We are on very firm geographical foundations here. Yeah. Very firm. So he builds the barrier with blocks of iron. We do have to go and search for the barrier in Singapore. No! That's the way it is. And after he hit the barrier, it's not called Sud anymore. The Sud is a barrier to patch something. It's now called Radam, which is like a dam you build to create a dam. This is important because in the hadith you'll not find the word sad, you'll find the word radam. Good. After he built it, he said, now blow with your bellows. Build a fire, blow with your bellows. And now he poured kittle, molten copper on the barrier and uh, Masabo, who is the engineer here, will tell you it prevents rust. After the barrier was built, Gog and Magog could neither penetrate nor could they scale the barrier. Then Zulkarnain said, Hada rahmatu mi rabbi. This barrier is constructed successfully with Allah's help as mercy from Allah. But, هَذَا رَحْمَةُ مِنْ رَبِّي فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَاءَ لَهُ دَكَّاءَ Could Alexander who worshipped the Greek gods and goddesses could say, could he say this? Huh? When will they wake up? He said, when that time comes of which my Lord has won, he is going to bring down this barrier. He is going to do it. And then the warning of my Lord will come to pass. Gog and Magog are going to be set loose in the world. And since they have PhDs in facade, now we understand. The demolition, the demolition job going on around the world today can only have one explanation, only one. This is the explanation. When they are released into the world, what kind of world will it be? Hmm? This is why you have the word Karnain. Two horns or two ages. If you, under, if you take the two ages as the meaning, that was one age. <coughs> and what a world it could have been. And now this is the second age. Because I have created creatures of mine so powerful that none but I can destroy them. This is Hadith al-Qudsi. Direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Sahih Muslim. And so power in the world now 
power in the world, power which cannot be challenged, <laughs> no, will now be released and this power will rest on foundations which have to be godless to be agents of facade because godly people, righteous people don't act in that way. And so power will now be used in a manner which is opposite from that first stage. In that first stage, power rested on the foundations of faith and power was used to punish the oppressor. Remember? And now power will be used, power which rests on foundations which are godless, power will be used to oppress. Are you beginning to understand the world in which we live today? That one <coughs> is a power you can trust because it is on foundations of godliness. And anyone who has the truth in his heart must have the truth on his lips. So you can trust him. But now this one there are three categories of lies. Did you know about it? There are lies, and then there are great lies, and then there is 9-11. <laughs> this, this is the world in which we now live. And then that one is one in which power, which rested on the foundations of faith, was used to protect those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct and assist them. And this is one which targets those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct and demonizes them and terrorizes them and sends them to a place called Guantanamo. Do you see the difference between the two? And now, what about the journey to the East? That one, even, the, even if these were a primitive people, but they were living in a land below which there is a whole basin of oil. And that precisely, of course, is Caspian Sea. Eh? Caspian Sea is a huge basin of oil. With Zulkarnain, he left them undisturbed because the human person was more valuable than the oil. But the new world <laughs> of Gog and Magog says, no, human beings are like cockroaches. You don't have to bother of them. And this new world is, is, is essentially racist. Racist to the core. And they're not like us. So they are dispensable. The oil is what we want. And we go after the oil without regard for human rights. Or they are people who are living a primitive way of life. So they only take from the earth enough for, ed for their daily sustenance. And they show reverence for rivers. And they would be horrified, absolutely horrified, to find a people taking all the sewage from a town and pumping it into a river? Are these human beings? Or are they some satanic force? This is how that primitive man would respond. Hmm? And now these people come who are agents of facade and say, we will not allow you to live that way. And so they take them out of the setting in which they are living, the primitive way of life. 
and bring them into what I call the blue jeans, Jamaat. Yes. And so we have two ages. We have that age and we have this age. And you can now understand the world in which you live and you can now look back to see the world that you could have lived in. Hmm? This is the Quran addressing mankind. If only we'll take a little time to go to the Quran. Have they been released? Or are they still behind the barrier? Let me Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam is asleep at the home of his wife Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he sees something in his sleep, and the hadith is, is in Sahih Bukhari, I think about six, eight times. Different versions. He sees something in his sleep which is terrible, 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 terrible. And he wakes up from his sleep, it's a vision, eh? And his face is flushed red. What did he see? And he says to her, Wailul lil Arab, min sharrin kalikta Go on to the Arabs because of a great evil which has now been released. Now it's going to be, it's close upon them. And then he raised his hand like this. And he said, today a hole has been made in the Radam. That's the word used, Radam. That Zulkar named it. Indicating that the release of Gog and Magog, which can only take place when Allah chooses. The release has now commenced, so the barrier is going down. She then asked, Will we be destroyed? And there are righteous people living amongst us. He said, Naam. We meaning the Arabs, eh? Because he said, Wailul al Arab. Will we be destroyed when there are righteous people living amongst us? He said, Naam. Iza kathur al khabath. When khabath, nastiness, immorality, what, what today can be called moral garbage, <laughs> when it prevails, at that time, the destruction of the Arabs will take place. We are now living on the very brink of the destruction of the Arabs. On the very brink of it. It's a terrible time coming ahead of us. And so from the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, it is as plain as daylight. And from our examination of the world around us, it is as plain as daylight that Allah brought down that barrier long years ago. That Gog and Magog, who are human beings? So you can't recognize them by looking at them. You have to recognize them by their conduct, or you could use the word footprints, no? By their conduct, that's how you recognize them. They've been released long ago. But if you say they have not been released, then I have the right to ask, where is the barrier? You don't even need to travel to the Caucasus Mountains. There's something called the internet now. You may have heard of it. And something called Google Earth. <laughs> and you could just, Imam, you could just type and the Caucasus Mountains right there on the screen. And you can move around, you get the Dariel Gorge. And when you look, it's a, it's a big military highway now from Russia coming down south. Barrier is not there anymore. If you say that you cannot have your cake and eat it at the same time. If you say that Gog and Magog have not been released, the barrier is still there, which is the majority opinion, unfortunately. 
And I show no disrespect for my brothers, the learned scholars of Islam. That's not my style. Then we have the right to respectfully ask them, where is the barrier? And why are you not making an effort to go and search for such a historic, such a historic construction which is in the Quran? If it is still standing there, how can you eat biryani for dinner and go to sleep? Huh? Why are we in this situation? I have been lecturing on the subject of Gog and Magog for more than 15 years now. When I started in New York, people looked at me and asked whether this man has come from Mars or Venus. Or you couldn't believe what it was like 15 years ago, really. Because nobody, nobody, nobody was speaking on this subject. Now, no. And I am in the United States of America. And you got the whole world of Islam in New York, you know. Everybody there. Oh, every single Muslim community of the world is present in New York. And here comes this curious fellow called Imran, talking about Gog and Magog. We never heard about it before. And of course, the majority, absolute majority of the scholars, overwhelming majority of the scholars are saying, no, he's wrong. He's wrong. Gog and Magog have, cannot be released. The barrier is still standing. Why do they always put in opposition? Why? We have a problem of methodology. At the very beginning of the Qur'an, Allah teaches a lesson. But it has escaped the attention of many of us. He says that he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam alayhi salam. Fasajadu illa Iblis. This is not, this sentence is not constructed by accident. No. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not deficient in the use of language? No. There is a reason why this sentence is constructed like this. He ordered the angels to bow, to prostrate. And they all prostrated. In other parts of the Quran, Jamia, they all prostrated. Illa Iblis. If you take a verse of the Quran, in isolation or you take a hadith in isolation the Americans call it standalone you'll have to come to the conclusion inescapably that Iblis is an angel can't get away from that can't get this is the defective methodology Iblis is an angel In fact, in my early years as a student, when I was green, I remained green for a long time, huh? I was also battling with it. But it has to be, it has to be an angel. And then I went dabbling into Christian teaching. They talk about a fallen angel. Oh, he fell down. <laughs> Because we had not as yet been grounded in methodology. But when you go to the rest of the Quran, you say, hey, wait a minute, I made a mistake there. Because here Allah speaks about the angels. They don't have any free will. They don't have any self-directed will. They don't have choice. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ they have to do whatever they are told to do. So if they are a, a creation which must obey, no choice in the matter, and this fellow disobeyed, it looks as though he wasn't an angel. Eh? Maybe I made a mistake. Eh? Oh my gosh. This is a rotten methodology. 
to take a verse of the Quran in isolation. And then, of course, Allah confirmed it all. When, he, when I went to Surah al Kaf, I saw it there straight, straight in my face. This is not by accident. This is the Lord of the heavens and the earth teaching methodology for study, for the pursuit of knowledge. Do not make the, act, the mistake of taking any verse of the Quran or any hadith or anything in isolation and coming to a conclusion. You could be correct, but you can also be wrong. And sometimes when you make a mistake, that's it for you. You damage forever and ever. We can't trust you anymore. And that's what, unfortunately, they have done. There's one hadith, only one, in Sahih Muslim. But after Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, <coughs> the true Messiah will kill the false Messiah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will فَبَعَثَ Allah بِعْجُوجَ وَمَعْجُوجَ بَعَثَ But the Quran uses a different word for release. In Surah Al-Anbiya, إِذَا فُتِحَتْ فُتِحَتْ يَعْجُوجَ وَمَعْجُوجَ When Gog and Magog are released, they're opened. That is the release. And Ba'atha means to send or to raise. Well, it couldn't mean to raise here. Why? Because they've been raised long ago. And they were committing fasad long before we built the barrier. So it has to mean Allah will send Gog and Magog at that time. And the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee and start to drink the water. And by the time the last of them pass, they'll say, there used to be water here. The Sea of Galilee is almost dry. Did you know that? It has now reached a level where it can no longer be revived. So it's essentially dead, waiting to dry up. I think that qualifies as evidence that there's some kind of a passage there for Gog and Magog. Hmm? But because the Hadith says that after Nabi Isa Islam killed that job, their understanding is that only at that time will Allah bring down the barrier <coughs> and only at that time will Gog and Magog be released. And Imran Hussein, 15 years now, a voice crying in the wilderness. But you cannot be angry with your brothers, they are more learned than you are. All that we can do is to pray that someone will tell them this is wrong methodology. When you go to the Quran to find out when will the barrier come down, remember we only have a hadith eh? in Sahih Bukhari about the vision while he was sleeping. When we go to the Quran, when will Allah bring down the barrier? We find in Surah Al-Anbiya the verse of all verses, in fact there are two verses. وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا Notice this is the only passage of the Quran I recite word by word. وَحَرَامٌ على قرية أهلكناها أنهم لا يرجعون a قرية and Allah destroyed it and we know that before the end Allah is going to destroy all وإن من قرية not a single one will escape. وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرِيَّةٍ 
illa nahnu muhlikuha qabla yawmil qiyamah aw mu'adhibuha azaban shadida wa kana thalika fil kitabi mastura suratul 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 isra otherwise known as surah bani israel every single town and city will be destroyed and those who escape destruction will be inflicted with terrible punishment but this is a subject that is must do there's a cover over it when allah lifts the cover then you see that wa haramun ala qaryatin ahlaknaha this is a town or a city and allah destroyed it and having destroyed it the people were expelled and they are not returning and then he put a ban on them that they can never return to this town or city to reclaim it as their own hatta until until when idha futihat yajuj wa majuj until gog and magog are released by allah wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun and they descend from every height or they spread out in every direction both the meanings are admissible which town which city is it you will go to the quran it will not tell you you got a homework to do you will go to the prophet and his latu sam he will not tell you you got a homework to do But when you take the totality of the data in the Quran on this subject of the signs of the last day because Gog and Magog is here and you ask which town is it then there's only one answer to the question it has to be Jerusalem that the city of Jerusalem was destroyed and Banu Israel were expelled the state of Israel was destroyed and for 2000 years they could not return <coughs> no they could not return Allah put a ban on them But when he was drowning underneath the water then he realized that he was a god you know previously he said ana rabbukum al ala i am the lord most high but when he was drowning underneath the water he said oh my gosh i'm not god <laughs> <laughs> i am not god so that he declared his faith in the god of banu israel so allah said al ad now fir aun wa qad asayta qabla and before this you were in obstinate rejection wa kunna min al mufsidin and you were committing fasad fa yawma nunajjika bi badanik this day we have decided we have ordained to preserve your physical body litakuna liman khalfaka aya so that your physical so that your physical body when it is rediscovered when it resurfaces in the historical process will be an aya a sign for a people to come after you a people who live the way you lived and who will die the way you died at the last moment when it's too late then they will say now we believe and they'll die like that the way he died and go to the hell fire wayna kathira min an-nas an ayatina la ghafilun but most people are too busy too busy to bother about my signs unfolding in the world 
The body of Ferran was discovered at the end of the 19th century. The Zionist movement was established at precisely that moment. And so now, the people of the town are going to be brought back. And there's a divine hand in this. <laughs> it's not acting by accident. Huh? And so they come back after 2,000 years. Who is bringing them back? If you can see who are bringing them back, you can identify Gog and Magog. Yeah. And if you want to know the origins of Gog and Magog, because they're constantly expanding, because they're spreading out, okay, in all directions. So the original Gog and Magog would be small in number, but eventually you're going to have Pakistani Gog and Magog. <laughs> you have Japanese Gog and Magog. You have Chinese Gog and Magog, okay? But the original Gog and Magog, are the ones where the center of power is located. This is only the periphery. Islamabad is the periphery. Here is the center. Where is the center? We say that it is Gog and Magog who attack Christian European civilization, just Christendom, and transformed it into godless modern Western civilization. We say this is the civilization of Gog and Magog. And it is this civilization which now possesses a power which cannot, cannot be rivaled. It is this civilization which uses military power to attack, as uh, Ambassador Adlan Rose was speaking about, the period of military conquest of the rest of the world, and then the colonization of the rest of the world, and then the decolonization. They are the ones who brought back Banu Israel to the town to reclaim it as their own. And so there is Gog and Magog. But originally you have to look at the Caucasus Mountains. And when we do that we find that it is the Khaza, K -H -A -Z -A -R. who converted to Judaism shortly after the time of the Prophet And so now you have a curious creature, they don't like me for this, a curious creature emerges in history who is not Semitic. He is most certainly not a cousin of the Arabs. He is European. But he's also a Jew. Oh? Can you have such a thing as a European Jew? I thought they were from the seed of Ibrahim salam, through Ishaq salam. I thought they were Banu Israel. Not only is the European Jew something unique amongst Jews, but if you do a genetic test on him, you see the evidence staring at you that he is genetically unique in the world. No other people, no other people are like him, the European Jew. Hmm? And so we have identified for you that the Khaza who are the original have become Jews and some of them also became Christians. And I believe some of them also became Muslims, so let me speak softly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the end of it all is that they're going to have a grand, mighty clash between Gog and Magog. And Allah speaks of it. Like waves crashing against each other. It can also mean merging with each other, which explains globalization around the world today, one global society. But the other meaning is the one I want to concentrate on now. 
the clash that will take place. You have my book somewhere around there, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. There is this mighty clash that is going to take place. I don't want to spoil your tea, eh? But when we examine to identify them today, there is no question but Magog is Russia. And the alliance with Russia. And therefore Gog will have to be the Anglo-American Israeli alliance. And when the clash is not going to be with bows and arrows or not, it's going to be nuclear weapons and not thermonuclear weapons and only those can produce Dukhan. And most of mankind are going to die. But I don't think the heavens will be weeping for most of them. Because they have eyes and yet they don't see. They have ears and yet they don't hear. They have hearts and yet they don't understand. The Quran is in the world but they don't read the Qur'an and study it. So they're just like cattle. Most of mankind are going to die when this clash takes place. After that, self-destruction, huh? mutual self-destruction. The state of Israel will be defenseless. And then comes the army from Khorasan. And it's not a Muslim army that will destroy Israel because Israel will already be broken. At that time, said the Prophet You're going to fight them, the Jews. And you will kill them, you will defeat them. Not all Jews. No, don't take a hadith in isolation. When you go to the totality of the Qur'an, you'll find if there are Jews who stand with you and condemn Israel, there are such Jews. They're there in Brooklyn. They support the oppressed. How can you say that these are Jews who are referred to in this hadith? So not all Jews. At that time, the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, They're going to be on the run. So this is not a confrontation, a military confrontation, where we will then destroy Israel, because they're going to be on the run. They're going to be hiding behind trees and stones. So the breaking of the power of Israel will take place with the Gog and Magog clash. It is after this. Now I left out something before that. After the Jal is killed, which is our next lecture, then Gog and Magog, the clash will take place. They will surround Nabi Isa al Islam in Bait al Maqdis. Let's say we've killed all those who are on earth, now let's kill all those who are in the heavens above. So they're going to be military warfare above. It's called Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> and then Nabi Isa will pray to Allah. And he will destroy Gog and Magog. And something will attack them at the back of the neck, the top of the spine. And we have some medical doctors here, so you've got homework to do now. And they fall down paralyzed. Could be that the immune system was devastated. And the smallest, tiniest attack could cause you to be paralyzed. And they die and by next morning their bodies are rotting. Hmm? And Allah will then send prehistoric birds with huge necks and pick up these bodies and have them disposed where Allah will have them disposed. This is the end of Gog and Magog. But after that comes the destruction, the finishing off of the state of Israel. And then the Khilafah is restored in Jerusalem. And the truth triumphs over falsehood. And justice triumphs over injustice and oppression. I'm sorry that I had to race with this. I normally don't race like this. But we wanted to finish in one hour, we finish in an hour and five minutes. So you can have your tea now. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ سَمِّلْ عَلِيْهُ وَتَبْعَلَيْنَا يَمُولَانَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ تَوَّابْ رَحِيمٌ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا رَحْمَ الرَّحْمِ نَام